Amen. While you're standing, I direct your attention to Luke chapter 17. And let me say what a treat it is to have Brother Sisterson with us. We love and appreciate him so very much. Amen. Thankful for all of our guests that are here tonight. Thank you uh, for being with us. I believe that God wants to do something great in this house. Be honest tonight, I believe that there are miracles that are going to take place before we leave here tonight. If we would let our faith rise from the very onset of this message, I believe that God is going to show up and God is going to confirm his word tonight. Luke chapter 17, we'll begin reading at verse number 11. The Bible says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that, and I want you to notice the next three words, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee Oh, they lifted their voices. They cried and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He saw them and he responded with a word and said, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And the Bible says that they responded with action and they went and showed themselves and they were cleansed. If the Holy Ghost would help us for the next few moments, I will not preach long. I want to preach to you from this thought. As they went. As they went. Would you set your Bibles down and let's pray together and ask that God would be with us for the next few minutes here. Jesus, we love you. God, I praise you. I worship you tonight. I'm asking that you would help us tonight. You would anoint these lips of clay. You would anoint these ears to hear. Our hearts to receive and our minds to understand. I'm asking that you would confirm your word with signs following tonight. I'm asking that faith would rise in our spirit where we believe that you can do absolutely anything before we leave here. And we will not fail to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor that you alone are worthy of. Would you clap your hands unto the Lord and give him praise tonight? Everybody lift your voice and give a praise. Add your voice to your hand clap. He's worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. I do not have a runway tonight, so if you'll just jump on board, I believe that God is going to do something in this house. I would like to begin this Sunday evening by letting you know that we serve a God of movement. You don't have to go very far in your Bible before you will see that this is played out. For in Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 2, the Bible says that the earth was, was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. There was movement. There was motion. There was action. From the beginning of time, God was setting a precedent that if anything is going to happen or if anything is going to be done, it won't happen on its own, but there has to be some movement and there has to be some action. He is a God of action. He is a God of movement. And while he is all of that and he is a God of movement, it is his desire that his people be a people of movement and that they be a people of action. If you will remember just a few months ago, I 
preached a message called Movement Matters and how if you don't move physically, you have the ability to fall prey to many different diseases and conditions and that there is a benefit to moving physically. Let me tell you tonight that more important than physically, there is a benefit to moving spiritually. If he likes to move, then I am convinced that he has no greater desire on this Sunday night than to see his people move. If he likes to take action, then I believe that it is his plan on this Sunday night for his people to be a people of action and motion. That is why I believe with everything that is in me and pardon the phrase, but church is not a spectator sport. But it is a participator sport. Church is not some place you go to just sit and do nothing on a Sunday night. But church is a place you go and you move. Church is a place of action. Church is a place of motion. We weren't created to just sit here and do nothing. We weren't created to just sit here and go through the motions. We haven't been called out of darkness into this marvelous light to just come to church on a Sunday night and do nothing. But ladies and gentlemen, we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light to give him praise I refuse to come to church and sit there with my legs crossed and my arms folded for when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me I've got to get up and do something about it I've got to get up and I've got to get up and shout. I've got. You might as well get on board. It's not going to get much better than this. When I think of his goodness, I've got to give him praise. We were created to be a people of movement. We were created to be a people of action. I've got a question for you tonight. Do you remember the pit that God pulled you out of? Do you remember the alcohol and the drugs that God delivered you from? Do you remember your home was a mess? But one day I went to a meeting one night and my heart wasn't right. But someday got a hold of me. And yet some still want to come in on a Sunday night and sit there and do nothing about it. You could be sitting on a bar stool, but thank God you're sitting on a church pew. God's been good to you. If he moved to save your soul, then you ought to move to give him praise. If he moved to put your family back together, then you ought to move and give him worship. If he moved and put your marriage back together, then you ought to praise him. I'm going to preach it to you tonight. The answer for your fear is not to just sit there. The answer for your doubt and your unbelief is not to just sit there. The answer for your anxiety is not to just sit there. But I pray before this service is over with that something would get on the inside of you that says fear, you're going under my feet tonight. Anxiety, you're going under my feet tonight. I'm not going to sit here and carry this baggage any longer, but I'm going to get up and move. Well, you don't know, preacher. The devil's been on my back all day. Get up and give him praise. Well, we had an argument on the way to church tonight. Shake that off and get up and give him praise. Don't just sit there and let it get worse. But throw your hands in the air. Throw your head back. God's been good to me. When was the last time 
you shouted your hair down. When was the last time you shouted your tie off and you worshiped with reckless abandon? When was the last time you went home tired and completely spent because you went to church on a Sunday night? I've come to preach to you tonight. It's time to take action. It's time to move. If he's a God of movement, I'm going to be a man of movement. If he's a God of action, then I'm going to be a man of action. Somebody needs to look fear in the eye and say no more. I'm preaching to somebody in this house. You've allowed fear to rob you and to plague your mind long enough. You hear me tonight? It's time to have a staring contest with fear and let fear know you're not going to win this time. I'm not walking out of these doors with fear on my mind. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You can be seated. I refuse to leave here with the same baggage that I came in with. May I tell you tonight that church... It's not a social club. Church is not a place where we come just to see who's here and to see what everybody's wearing. That's not what church is all about. But church is a place where I come to get his attention. Church is a place where I come to lift my hands. I come to lift my voice. I come to... If you want a social club where you're just there to sip iced tea and talk to everybody, you come to the wrong place. But this is a place where we worship. This is a place where we praise. Well, I'm really not that demonstrative. I don't know about all that shouting. I don't know about all that praising. I don't know about all that leaping. And yet you wonder why you have no joy. Because you haven't leapt for joy. And yet you wonder why you're still dealing with the same situations and the same circumstances. And you can't get any victory because you forgot a long time ago that the psalmist said shout with a voice of triumph. You want victory? Then honey, you want to open your mouth and shout for victory. You want joy? You want to leap a little bit for joy. You want deliverance? You want to shout like you've already been delivered. You want to shout like you've already been healed. I'm still not convinced. I don't like to lift my voice. I don't like to get demonstrative. Let somebody run into the back of your brand new car. And we'll see how loud you lift your voice. And we'll see how demonstrative you get. And yet when you remember the pit that God pulled some of us out of. You remember that nightclub that you used to dance the night away that God rescued you out of and you want to tell me you're not demonstrative? Baby, it's time to wake up and realize God's been good to me and if he never does another thing, he's still good. He's still worthy. Your family was falling apart. Your marriage was headed for a divorce. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. Let them shout. 
Let them dance. Let them worship. I'm just going to sit back here and be a spectator. And yet you wonder why you're still in the same situation. And you're still in the same circumstance. And you're still fighting the same battle. And all you want to do is spectate. The Holy Ghost sent me here on a Sunday night to rattle your cage. And tell you it's time to wake up. It's time to get up. And it's time to move. You hear me? It's the devil's goal to get you to shut your mouth. Because if he can rob you of shutting your mouth, he can rob you of your praise. He can rob you of your miracle. He can rob you of your blessing. And so he wants to keep your mouth shut up, locked up. But I've come to tell somebody tonight, it's time to let hell know. I don't care what the devil don't want. I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to shout anyways. I'm going to lift my voice anyways. I'm preaching to you tonight that your miracle that you've been waiting on. I feel miracles in this house tonight. I felt it all week and I feel it even again right now as I'm preaching to you. There are miracles. I'm talking about notable miracles that are fixing to take place in this room. If somebody will let your faith rise. But your miracle's not going to happen when you just sit there. Your miracle's not going to happen when you don't make any movement. Your miracle is in your movement. If you move, he's going to move. If you move, your answer's going to come. If you move, my God, your deliverance is going to come. If you move, your healing is going to come before we leave. So the Bible says, I'm going to hurry. The Bible says in our text that there were ten men. They were lepers. They were the outcasts. Of society. These were the type of men that if they would have walked through the back doors of those church, of the church here, you would gather your family together. You would gather your kids together. Because you didn't want them to be about around a leper. You didn't want the disease to get on them. We're talking about men that had no hope. Men that were feared and looked upon with disdain. They were avoided. But there was something inside of these men that said, I'm tired of living with this condition. I'm tired of being an outcast. I'm tired of leprosy. And we can sit here and we can die with our leprosy or we can lift our mouth up and do something about this. Somebody said, hey, Jesus is coming around. You mean the one that healed the blinded eyes? You mean the one that turned the water into wine? That Jesus is coming this way. They said, yeah, that Jesus is coming this way. And so they begin to peer off in the distance. And they see a man walking down the dusty, the dusty road with his sandals on. And they begin to lift their voice and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. They lifted their voice. We don't care. We can sit here and be quiet and go home the same way that we came on a Sunday night. We can sit here and walk out on a Sunday night with the same baggage that we've been carrying. Or we can make up in our minds that we're going to live our voice and we're going to get his attention nobody likes us anyways we might as well make a little bit of noise and so they lifted their voice 
they moved first. And then Jesus said, I've got a word for you. Go! Show yourselves unto the priest. I'm not going to heal you in this moment. I'm just going to speak a word. But you've got to respond to the word that I'm about to speak. I'm going to speak a word. But there's got to be a little bit of action that follows up on your part. And the Bible said as they heard that word, they begin to take some steps. And as they went, they were cleansed. Brother Dylan, I don't believe it was the first step that they got cleansed. I do not believe it was the second step that they got cleansed. But every step that they took, they said it may not be the first step. And it may not be the second step. It may not be the tenth step. But if he said go, I'm going to go. If he said move, then I'm going to move. As they went, as they came to church on a Sunday night, and as they came to church on a Sunday night again, and as they came to Wednesday night Bible study, and as they came to Sunday morning service, and as they came back to Sunday night service again, as they kept on moving, as they kept on praying, as they kept on fasting, as they kept on worshiping, the miracle began to transpire in their life. I don't know. God help me. I don't know how long your journey to the priest is. But you've got to keep on moving. Well, they went down and got prayed one time and they got healed. And here I am 10 years later and I'm still dealing with that same sickness. I don't know how long your journey to the priest is, but I'll tell you something. If you keep on moving, if you keep on walking, if you keep on praying, if you... So that's the problem. If it doesn't happen within the first week, we quit praying about it. I'm preaching to somebody right now. If it doesn't happen in the first year, we quit fasting about it. And the Holy Ghost is saying, don't quit yet. You're selling yourself short of a miracle. But if you keep walking, We walk by faith and not by sight. If he said go, I'm going to go. If he said get prayed for, I'm going to get prayed for again and again and again. (laughs) You hear me? It's not good enough just to be a hearer of the word. But we've got to be a doer of the word. Somewhere, we've got to respond to the word. Somewhere, there's got to be action. I don't believe, Brother DaCosta, if they would have never responded, that they would have been healed. They had to respond to the word of God. If they didn't respond and they would have said, I don't like that answer, they would still have their leprosy. Naaman, go dip in the Jordan. Well, you don't understand what kind of river that is. It's dirty. It's mucky. Go dip in the river. And if you dip seven times, that leprosy is going to go. We may not like his answer, but we keep on moving. We keep on walking. As they went, they were cleansed. As they moved, they were healed. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. You stop moving. I'll go pray for somebody else to get their healing. But I'm done praying for my healing. I'll pray.
pray for somebody else to get their deliverance. But I'm done praying for my deliverance. You stopped moving. And the Holy Ghost is here to tell you tonight that if you'll move one more time, if you'll get up and go one more time, if you'll get up and take some action one more time, then your miracle's going to happen. Your deliverance is going to happen. There's got to be a response to the word of the Lord. I don't know if I'm ever going to get healed. I don't know if I'm ever going to get delivered. I don't know if I'm ever going to get a breakthrough. And I've watched them come to service after service, week after week, with their arms folded and their legs crossed, staring into an abyss. Just be happy I showed up to church, count me in the roll, that I'm there. And yet they wonder why they still haven't received a miracle. But I've come to tell you tonight, go, show yourself to the priest. I've come to tell you tonight, it's time to get up and it's time to move. It's time to get up and it's time to take some action. It's time to get up and it's time to respond to the word of the Lord. You don't have to spend another night with anxiety. You can get delivered tonight. You don't have to spend another night with fear. You can get delivered tonight. A miracle happens when we respond to the word of the Lord. There's got to be action on our part. Matthew 12, it talks about the man with a withered hand. Comes to Jesus, his hand is withered. And Jesus said, I'm going to give you a word. Stretch forth thy hand. And there was a response to the word. He stretched forth his hand and he was made whole. We can talk about it, John chapter 9. You've got the man, he's blind. Jesus makes him some little mud balls and he puts them in his eyes and he says, Now I want you to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And what does a man do? He doesn't sit there and say, This is crazy. You spat in the ground. You you put it in my eyes. What what in the world are you doing? No. He said, if he said, go wash, my response is, I'm going to go wash in the pool of Siloam. I don't know who you are tonight. I don't know if it's been 12 years like the little lady with the issue of blood. I don't know if it's been 38 years like the impotent man that sat by the pool. I don't know what you're facing and I don't know what you're going through. But I'm here to preach to somebody under the sound of my voice that there is a release of miracle power in this house tonight. And if you would get up and move, if you would get up and go, the Holy Ghost is saying, just keep on walking. Walking. Just keep on praying. Just keep on fasting. And I'm going to perform the miracle. Musicians coming. I don't know the circumstance that seems insurmountable. I don't know the family problems. I don't know the sickness. That has been plaguing your body. And nobody knows. I don't know the mental and the emotional turmoil that has been silently ravaging your mind. But I do know what the Holy Ghost spoke into my spirit to tell you. And that is that your miracle is in your movement. Your answer, sir, it's not in the bottle. Your answer, ma'am, it's not in the promiscuous lifestyle, no. Your answer is in your movement towards Jesus. 
Jesus. Your answer is in Jesus. I'm telling you that there is faith in this room tonight that I believe that God can do absolutely anything before we leave here. Everybody standing. You've been sitting too long. You've stopped moving. And you come to service after service. Pray a little prayer. Hear your little sermon. Go home and you never make a move. But I'm preaching to somebody tonight. If I can help you one more time, just get enough faith. Where you would scoot out of that aisle and say, one more time, I'm going to try. I'm tired of living with this. I'm tired of going through this. But tonight, as they went, the Bible says they were cleansed. All across this house, I want you to lift your hands, lift your voice. I feel the Holy Ghost. If you're tired of that sickness, if you're tired of that disease, if you're tired of that fear, if you're tired of that anxiety, it's time to get out and move. It's time to make your way to the front. It's time to throw your hands in the air. And there is a miracle that's fixing to happen for you. Keep walking, keep 
Yeah.